Okay, with us now is Amber J. Do you want to go by Amber J. Lawson? Amber J. Amber J. She's Amber J. Okay. <laughs> Ready, Ira? Good? Okay. With us now is Amber J. How are you? Awesome. How are you? Good. So we found out that we were both from Missouri. Yes, we're from Missouri. Go Mizzou. Now, your side's closer to Kansas, so do you say Missouri? Or are you in Missouri? I say Missouri. There you go. Me too. Um, you are known for all of your social media greatness, but can we talk a little bit about your career? So from your days at Mizzou, and I had asked you earlier, how did you get your start? And you said you gave yourself your start. Let's talk about that. Well, so I was at Mizzou. I was in theater with John Hamm <laughs> and uh, went to Chicago. We used to stock um, Steve Carell at Second City. And then I came up through Second City and Improv Olympic in Chicago and was a performer. And then I went to LA as a performer. And I kind of had this aha moment where I didn't want my future to be in someone else's hands. So I became a producer. And I started producing content, producing you know, my own destiny, really being in charge of my own destiny. And in the process of that, as you can imagine, as you well know, being a producer is being an entrepreneur. It's very much a very similar skill set. One door closes, another one opens, you make opportunity, you make your path, you make it happen, you set the goal and you achieve your goal. And um, so it was a natural progression for me to become an entrepreneur. And I started in 99 um, with uh, an on original online portal back when portals were a thing, right? <laughs> and um, we and we were on dial-up, right? It was AOL, bing bong, bing bong. And um, so it was really hard to deliver content. But we started, uh, our first show was called Pop Girl. It was girls around the, the globe sending in their videotapes of them singing and dancing. On VHS. And America <laughs> voting on it. I mean, we were kind of on to something, but a moment ahead of our time. But that kind of set me on the path of like, oh, I don't need to follow step A, B, or C to achieve my goal. And in fact, Nappy that we're at today uh, was one of the key pieces in that. When I moved to LA, I met a woman who gave me a job working, supporting Nappy 20 years ago in Vegas. And um, so I got to see different people's experiences and kind of create my own path. And you know, I, I credit Nappy also with access. So for me, you know, even though I had gotten some great interviews with, um, you know, different key celebrities, it was at Nappy that I got to interview Jay Leno. And I cried. I cried a lot, like happy tears. And I called my dad in St. Louis and I said, Dad, it's not like I grew up to be on The Tonight Show. I said, but uh, Jay Leno was on your daughter's show. And he's like, babe, you know, and it was like, it was kind of cool. But, you, but it's because of Nappy. It's because of people working together. And it seems like there's a collaboration of creative people here. And especially this year, for whatever reason, I think Nappy 17 is on fire. Right? People are having I, a great time, right? Well, I, I know you just got here, right? But <laughs> yeah, I haven't gotten the, I haven't gotten the complete lay of the land yet. But uh, Nappy is always an amazing time. And, and you know, we were just talking to another friend of mine and, and just saying the fortuitous connections that show up. You know, like, it, it is about putting yourself out there. And sh I think showing up is half the, the job, the trick, right? Um, show up and, and have a vision and uh, meet people and let the universe come to you. I also think you're very other-centered, and that's one of the phrases I like to use a lot. And that's when a person really does care about delivering on somebody else's expectations. They're not a taker, they're a giver, and you're very much a giver. Um, and let's talk about this brand new multi-channel network kind of thing that you got going on through YouTube. I know it's a couple of years old, but now it's really hitting its stride. What is it? Well, so we're actually just a little over a year old. Okay. Um, we were in stealth mode a year before that. but. Um, you know, so multi-channel networks aren't new in in this um, YouTube space. It kind of came out of necessity where, if you think about it, we all come together, all boats rise, right? That's the whole idea of a multi-channel network. You have a channel, you have a channel, I have a channel. Together we come together, we get higher ad rates, we get more leverage at YouTube, we collaborate, we share audiences, we do branded, like all that comes together. So um, one of the... Uh, fastest growing yet underserved 
uh, market on YouTube is nonprofits. So every nonprofit, or mo a lot of nonprofits, are on YouTube. There's 1.8 million nonprofits in the United States. Wow. And there are a lot that are on YouTube, and they use it as a uh, repository, right? It's a place to host your video and have a library of content that you don't have to pay for. But here's the here's the like aha moment that I share is you know YouTube is the second largest search engine owned by Google, which is the number one search engine. Yep. So why not leverage the content you've already created and or already creating to do half you know your marketing work for you, so that when people are looking for um, I just got diagnosed with cancer. What do I do? Um, or um, I want to give blood. Where do I go? Or I want to donate to save the planet. That your video, your cause, your mission shows up first. I mean, it's just like, what do you do when you're searching for something? I Google it. Yep. Right? I mean, that's just what we do today. So you better be showing up or you kind of don't exist. Certainly not in the millennial or Gen Z world. And you're right, and a lot of nonprofits don't even realize that they need to market themselves. And so what you're doing is you've created a, a platform, basically. How does it work? So we we are um, a B2B, right? So um, even though a, you know, Good Amplify definitely has a brand in the marketplace um, and will over time become a, a direct-to-consumer brand, really our job right now is our entire mission is to do good at scale. So. Our job right now is to bring nonprofits into the network. We optimize up to 100 videos for them. And basically, we're their customer service. We help them navigate the world of YouTube. We give them a content strategy. And then, and some, we, and that may be it. They may come, they may go, we may do a campaign with them. We may bring them into things. Because like, we were at South by Southwest last year. Everybody who's in our network was at South by Southwest with us. No cost, to the, we're just there, you know? So, um, and exposing them to that next generation of donor, volunteer, or advocate. But really, the goal is to train these organizations, these causes, these movements, to be better at leveraging YouTube so that we can do good at scale. The more who know how to do it, the more we can grow audiences. And it's just like television, right? When you own your audience as a content creator, I just saw Anthony Zucker here, right? Like he owns his audience. The more, the more power you have in, um, with brands, with, in your fundraising, because you're not starting from scratch every time. You don't have to buy your audience or rent an audience. You own your audience. You have this ongoing relationship with them. And, and what, what cooler and funner way than through storytelling, through content? One of the things you mentioned to me too, uh, back in the green room, actually we were in another green room, but we we're, <laughs> were on the other side of the green room, um, was the fact that people are becoming more socially aware of different things. And you know, even mainstream television shows, let's talk about a couple of success stories that you've witnessed through that. Well, so one of the things that we are here certainly proselytizing with our friends in television and, and, and on any platform is here, the most effective form of marketing is storytelling. And, and we're making TV shows, we're making digital shows. Um, and usually there is some sort of lesson to be learned or cause to support, right? Whether that is uh, mental health, maybe it's, um, one, one that we were talking about is, um, and I think it was UCLA does this. They, I mean, they have a very much a big presence in media, but um, it, I think it was a CSI episode. It was about um, rape kits and how there are millions, at least hundreds of thousands of rape kits that don't get processed every year. And you can donate, I think it's 10 or $20 to process a rape kit. And, and I think A, there's this awareness, A, it was, and B, it was this compelling story, and C, here was an action that then I moved in the moment, I would like to do something, and so telling me what I can do. And I think that's, that's the piece that we're really um, trying to fill, is that, okay, I, here's this amazing story, I'm compelled into action, now what do I do? And making sure there's a to do, a call to action. And so Good Amplified is really marrying people and causes and bringing awareness to it all. Even today I was moved to tears because um, Nancy was talking um, and she was uh, talking about A&E and they're bringing back the movie Beaches. They're redoing Beaches. Oh, I know. Oh. 
I'm so excited, <laughs> I right? Me too. And I was, I, I was weeping because my mom passed away from breast cancer right around the time that the first Peaches came out. And it's like, wind beneath my wings. And I'm like, mom, I'm like, wow, they're remaking this, you know? But um, I really feel very passionate about that. I feel like we should use the platforms that we have to do good. And you are like the cheerleader of all of that. So I'm honored to know you and excited to meet Aww. you and to work with you m moving forward. Um, for you personally, um, what is a, a charity, something that moves your heart? I'm sure many of them do, but is there something that touches you that you'd like to talk about? Sure. So, well, I'm very concerned about the climate. Okay. I mean, if we don't have a planet to live on, that's going to be a problem for all of us. And we can't do any good. Um, and then, I, you know, I love animals. Okay. I am really like, I have a 15-year-old chihuahua who just had a birthday. What's your chihuahua's name? Lola J. Lawson. Obviously. Happy birthday, Lola J. Lawson. <laughs> Mommy's here. <laughs> um, and, you know, I am... Uh, uh, we work with Make-A-Wish, so like those are hugely moving. I, I mean, I'm moved by really every. I mean, that's why I'm here, right? And 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 I want those who are most passionate about whatever cause is pulled called to them to be able to get it out. So like we're ta we're working with them, um, an adoption organization who helps adopt. I didn't even know they give grants to help in the in the cost of the adoptions. You know um, that is huge. Or bone marrow registry. Wow. You know um, these are huge things that I didn't know about. They, like they just haven't crossed my life path yet. But but I want to sign up for all of that. And why not? And it's so easy. It's been made so easy. And there's so many people doing good. We want to amplify their good. Got it. Uh, amplified right here on Live It Up. <laughs> Stay tuned for more. We've been visiting with Amber J. Thanks for watching.